feeling. It rem every one of you reminds me, triggers a thought, and uh, that's the advantage to being older. You've had more yes. things to think about, more experiences. <laughs> in fact, yesterday at the luncheon, where it was mostly an older crowd, uh, the wife of the MC, uh, she said, I knew I was going to get old, but I didn't know it would happen so fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're young, do you remember those days when I'm bored, Mom. So what can we do? Now, it's like, I don't have time for boredom. It's like, we are just so occupied. It's like, we can't handle everything that's coming at us. And so, um, the thought that uh, you had reminded me of has momentarily escaped me when I started. Oh no, here it comes back. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, I wanted to tell you how I got into the practical government school. So, I had no intention, never had any interest in politics, government. In fact, I would probably have shied away from this had it been up to me. And I thought that I was going to go into the ministry school because God has gifted me to teach. I have taught in the churches we've been in in the past. It has been productive. In fact, there was a prophetic word over us back 40 years ago that you will teach and you will have credibility. People will like you, and they will understand because you'll make things simple. Mm -hmm. Well, when you are simple, you have to make them simple for yourself to understand them, and then other people, who well, I think we all share some simplicity, mm -hmm. that it's easier for us to understand things when they're made simple. Yes. So I taught, it was a successful thing, and in my practice as a chiropractor, it was really a teaching role, because when I started, there was no Medicare, there was no private insurance that covered chiropractic. So people who came to you paid out of their own pocket with their hard-earned money, so they really had to believe that what you were doing was going to do them some good. And so you had to present to them what was the principle that you were doing that was different, taking drugs is one way, to change your health, but getting your body back into alignment the way that God created it to function is a different way without any drugs or surgery. And so once you would explain those principles, and so there I was being a teacher in that role as a chiropractor, and then in our churches I've been a teacher, and so when I came here, I thought I was gonna teach at Karis. And so I thought that they would just open up the doors and welcome me to come and teach, and it didn't happen. So we were at the point where we were in our second year, and so then, you know, we're choosing that third year, and I hadn't made up my mind, but my direction was going to be the ministry school. And so Andrew got up on stage with Pastor Mark and with David Barton, and they introduced that we are going to start the School of yes. Practical Government. Yes. It's like, you know, yeah, I'll sit and listen. It's like, you know, it's just not my thing. And so they went through the whole one-hour presentation. Andrew's closing in prayer. While he is praying, God says, speech writer. Whoa! That's the only word he said, and I knew it was God. I went up on the platform. I said, I want to sign up. I told David Barton, I told Andrew, I told um, Pastor Mark that I am going to come because God has just spoken to me. Mm -hmm. And Andrew says, well, I never would have thought of that as a speech writer, and I hadn't either. It was like a God idea. And so I go through the whole year of school, and it's not like there is a clear pathway to being a speech writer. <laughs> I was asked to be the speaker for our class, so, you know, people recognized that I could put words together. And so, um, as we were, uh, we knew that we were going to come into this practical government school, I said, you know, if we're going to be under the leadership of Pastor Mark at the practical government school, I want to be under his leadership at church, too. Yeah. So we moved to go from Woodland Park, where we live, 50 minutes to church yeah. every time we go, which was at first just once a week. Now we're down there three, four times a week. Wow. And it is so rewarding, but it was still not like I'm a speech writer, and what does that mean? And so then I get a call, would you be able to create a course 
in the practical government school for how to start a culture impact team. Well, what's required to create a course? Writing, like a speech writer. Yeah. And so we put the words together, create the syllabus, made the PowerPoint. So, you know, it may look differently how things work out. And I don't know if I'll be a speech writer in a campaign or just writing things for you to say when you're out there in your culture impact team or if it's words that I express, but does it matter? You know, it's like, however this works out, we know God has a plan and he does direct our steps. And if you keep moving, he can direct your course. If you're standing still, it's pretty hard for him to direct you. So we just keep moving and it is coming along wonderfully. Uh, just, we are thrilled in retirement we have been around people who have the means and have the uh, time to be doing whatever they want. So I had an airplane, as I mentioned to you, and so while I was still in practice, a, a patient of mine was very well to do. In fact, in one of the conversations he mentioned, well, our financial planner will only accept clients who have a net worth of over 10 million. So you knew that he was kind of dropping hints that we've got some money. And, and you know, he was a really nice guy. But in the process, uh, I said, you know, how about we give you an airplane ride? And, uh, you know, they had a condo at a highly exclusive kind of gated resort. And so they said, well, how about you come up and visit us? I said, well, how about I fly us up? And so we did that. And so uh, we were put into realms of people that we don't normally, normally associate with. And so what they would do every day, where should we go for breakfast today? And where should we go for lunch? What should we do this afternoon? And that is how they spent every day, just trying to figure out what shall we do today and what could we do that would be enjoyable. And it's like no purpose, no passion, just lots of money and lots of time. And you know, I really prefer having a purpose and a passion and using, and we have not given up on doing things. We first bought a motorhome after selling the airplane at the, at the sincere request of my wife who doesn't like turbulence when we fly. And so we got a motorhome and it was the biggest that you could get. Well, not the biggest, but I mean it was a giant motorhome and we really enjoyed it. But then it got to be kind of big for the travels we were making and so then we went back to a travel trailer. So it's not like we're giving up everything to do what God wants us to do, but with the travel trailer, we can go places, not impose on others, not have to go and get a reservation at a hotel, and we can carry our ministry around because ministry happens wherever we go. Mm -hmm. We were at a motorhome park, and uh, people came walking through, and the guy said, oh, I see your Colorado plates, uh, and we, we had been to Mount Rushmore, and so we were in uh, the Dakotas, and so, uh, his wife said, why is it that some Colorado plates are red and some are green? And I said, you know, we've only lived here three years. I honestly don't know. And so she said, what brought you to Colorado? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, I was a chiropractor. I read this book that, you know, says God gave us authority over all demons and disease. I began to pray for my patients and they got healed. And now we've come to Colorado to go to Bible college. And so they were receptive, but it was like a little bit of a blank look whenever I would mention a scripture. And so I said, uh, do you know what it is to be born again? No. And as I explained what Romans 10, 9 says, they both got born again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so the guy had been limping and he was telling me during our conversation that the doctors have been telling me I have to have this hip replaced and I just refuse to do it. I am not going to go through a surgery like that. Yeah. And so I said, well, how would you like to have Jesus heal that hip for you? Yeah. It's like, why not? You know, sometimes church people are much more resistant than other people. And so anyway, I said, well, let me ask you a question. Do you guys know what you're called now that you've been born again? No. A believer. Because you believe. It's not rocket science. So do you know what the scripture says? Jesus said that believers 
will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Not might, not should, they will recover. So I said, show me what, what uh, is the problem with your hip. And having been a chiropractor, I've worked with people like that. So there was a picnic bench and he sat down and he tried to cross his leg by pulling the leg up and he could just get it up to the knee using both hands. And then I said, push down on your knee, knowing what that would do. Oh, that really hurt. So I said, okay, you know now, and I know now what you can or can't do. So we're going to pray, and then I'm going to have you repeat that test. Because things are going to change. And so I said to his wife, you're a believer, you lay hands on him. I'm a believer, I'll lay hands on him. So we commanded pain to leave, we commanded hip degeneration to leave and then release the life of Christ that's in us to heal. And so then I said, okay, sit down, try it again. And I'm telling you, that's a sign of whether you believe that your prayers work. Mm -hmm. You put yourself on the spot, because it's not you, you're putting God on the spot. He said, you speak the word, and I will confirm it with signs following. So it's his job now, I've spoken the word. So he pulled his leg up and it looked identical it went up just the same distance i said push down wow that's a lot better (laughs) the pain was noticeably reduced now if i hadn't had him test that before and after he probably would have thought well i still can't do this i guess it didn't work there's a value to putting yourself on the spot test them before what can you do what hurts test them after. And so I said, have you guys ever had the flu? Mm -hmm. Did it leave immediately when it went away? No. Take a few days? Yeah. What's that called? Recovery. Well, Jesus said, believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It doesn't always have to go away immediately. Would you rather recover than not recover? Mm -hmm. Yeah, recovery is good. And so being out recreational, we got to do ministry. Two people got born again, one person got healed, we got blessed, and we still had a great time in our RV. Hallelujah! You don't have to give up anything to serve God. He will not only direct your paths, but He will bring things to you that you would never have been able to bring to yourself. So, I think we have time if anyone else wants to add their Impressions, takeaways, or uh, suggestions or comments? I'll go.